much. Right, hello everybody on the live stream. Um, we're going to be talking about sauerkraut for the next 10 or 15 minutes. Um, you can post your questions either on our page or on Falconry Hub and I'm going to be sitting over there um, watching for them. Um, we'll keep the, the video up um, anyway, so if you have any questions after the fact, we'll try and answer them. Um, but otherwise, um, I'm going to hand over to Faye um, and she's going to talk to you about sauerkraut. Okay, um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, so, when we're looking at sauerkraut, um, commonly called sauerkraut but also termed crop stasis, and the name basically implies that it is when food fails to move out of the crop. So when a bird eats, food should move from the crop into the proventriculus and then through the rest of the digestive system. In cases of sauerkraut or crop stasis, food fails to leave the crop, so it gets stuck within the crop. This then gets all putrefied, um, and then you end up with potentially toxemia and, in the worst case scenario, death. So, what causes it? There's quite a lot of different causes. Most common would be things like starvation. So, if you've got a bird that's starved and then you try and feed it a particularly large meal or you try and feed it a novel meal, that can trigger it. We can also get it with proventricular impactions. So if you've got something within the proventriculus that's stopping food moving into it, that means that food is stuck within the crop and therefore it can't move any further. We can also get it with any systemic disease that causes dehydration or debilitation because normal intestinal function and normal gastric function is dependent on the bird being fit and healthy. If we've got a bird that's dehydrated, or if we've got a bird that's debilitated for some other reason or they've got some other illness, often their intestines and their gastrointestinal tract won't function as normal, and this can show as crop stasis. Um, a common scenario, particularly with our bird of praise, and I know most of you guys are falconers, um, if you feed a hungry bird an excessive amount of food or a novel protein or something fresh caught, you are more likely to trigger some form of sort of crop stasis and then a sour crop from there. What signs are we looking for? Um, oh, forgot to say you can also get it, should, should look at the slide as well, um, you can also get it when you eat things out of the aviary that they shouldn't eat, so sand would be something particularly common. Um, and this again is because it forms an abnormal substance within the crop, you then get blockage of the crop and therefore the food remains in the crop longer than it should. If you've got a bird that's got some form of parasitic infection, there are certain parasites that will hang around the crop and they will hang around the oral cavity and they'll hang around the gastrointestinal tract. These can physically form an impaction, so they can form a blockage, they can stop things from moving, but they can also cause the bird to become debilitated and therefore predispose it for sour crop as well. So when we look at sort of how are we going to find it, um, the signs are often non-specific, so you often have birds that are just showing things like depression, um, they've got ruffled feathers, their eyes are a bit dull, they're just not quite right. On closer exam you'll usually find that they've got a distended crop, um, now usually you can feel this but you can also do x-rays to try and sort of find where the crop is and to see whether it looks distended or not. Um, You'll usually get a foul smell coming from the mouth, so there'll usually be a real stench of almost rotting meat because effectively that's what's going on. You also might find that the mucous membrane, so the gum colouring, might well be a little bit blue coloured, and that's because the bird is starting to go a little bit cyanotic. So they're not quite getting as much oxygen as they should, and that's usually because they're starting to show signs of endotoxic shock. So the stuff that's within their crop is starting to go a little bit rancid, those bacteria and those toxins are then entering into the bloodstream and then you're getting a shock as a result of that. If you're starting to see these signs, you're starting to get the smell, you're starting to get cyanosis, anything like that, you are actually quite rapidly on a decline, so you do need to get the bird seen quite quickly. Now, sometimes we'll do x-rays to try and diagnose it, but often we'll be able to diagnose just by inspection and just by looking. Um, when we're looking at sort of what do we term sour crop or sort of crop impaction um, or delayed emptying, so we look at the normal time for crop emptying being around two to six hours. Um, if it's not emptying within this time, then we would term it as a sort of delayed emptying, so a crop stasis. 
Now, that doesn't mean there's no food moving through, it just means that food is moving through less quickly, and in the worst case scenario, no food is moving through. The issue with that is that there's no digestive acids within the crop, which means this is a perfect environment for bacteria to proliferate, um, and this is where the problem arises. So as a result of having a crop stasis, the sorts of things we might find, you'll get a lack of nutrition given long enough because the bird can't absorb food from the crop and therefore they're not getting enough nutrition. You'll also get infection because the bacteria that are multiplying within the crop are going to go into the bird's bloodstream and you're going to get secondary infection there. You're going to get toxemia because if you've got rotting meat within your crop, you're going to risk having toxins going into your bloodstream and potentially you're going to get kidney disease because you've got a lack of fluid being absorbed from the crop, which therefore puts more pressure on your kidneys. So what are we going to do about it? Um, the first thing is we need to confirm it is. So normally the clinical signs will be enough for us to say, yes, there's a sour crop going on there. Whilst you're transporting the bird to the vet, you want to try and keep their head upright, particularly if they're quite collapsed, because if the bird's collapsed, the last thing you want is for all that material from the crop to go and sit and pool in the mouth and then get aspirated into the trachea, because then you've got fetid, putrefying material going into your trachea and into your respiratory system. If the bird is able to stand, it's quite helpful if they do vomit. So sometimes you'll get some birds that get motion sick or if you're going around a roundabout will vomit. That's actually quite helpful because the main thing we do in terms of treatment is we try and get the food material out of the crop. If they come to the vet and they haven't vomited on the way to the vet, um, we're going to make a priority of emptying that crop. Depending on the bird's state, it might be possible to do that with a combination of intravenous warmed fluids and medication. If the bird is quite collapsed or if that isn't looking like a suitable option, we'll need to anaesthetise the bird to actually get rid of this material from the crop. And what we do in those situations is we anaesthetise the bird with a gas. We'll then usually put an endotracheal tube, so a little tube into the trachea, partly to help them breathe and partly to prevent any other material that's coming up from the crop from going into the airway because we don't want to end up with an aspiration pneumonia going on. We'll then use combinations of warm saline um, to flush the crop, get rid of all of that material and what you do is you flush the saline in whilst occluding the esophagus so you're stopping that, that flush and that material going into the proventriculus. You then gently hold the bird in a sort of inverted position you're then going to try and flush that material. So you flush the saline in, you then release the pressure and invert the bird, which means that all of that material flushes into the mouth. You can then remove it with forceps or with your fingers. Um, and you do that several times until you've got rid of all of that material from the crop. Often if you've got birds that are dehydrated, either as a result of either as a result of the sour crop or as a because of, there's an underlying problem that's predisposed them from the sour crop, we'll often put them on IV fluids um, and we'll often monitor their blood pressure because the blood pressure can be quite significantly affected by this. Depending on the underlying cause or what we think the underlying cause might be, we will sometimes look for doing cultures for bacteria and for fungus. We might look at doing parasitology to see if there's an underlying parasite that's there. And part of the treatment might involve using medication to try and keep the crop moving more effectively. Um, so if there's a reason that the crop is moving slowly, we might want to put them on medication to keep the crop moving more quickly. And we might need to use combinations of easily digestible syringe feeds um, rather than casting material. So how can we look at preventing it? Um, we want, to prevent, we want to not overfeed a bird that's in low condition. Now, low condition obviously might be that the bird is unwell, but it also might be that they've just had a big day out hunting, they're not in the best of condition, they're at borderline flying weight. We don't want to feed them a big meal, particularly a big meal with lots of cast material. We want to make sure we break up and we don't feed large bones, um, and obviously we need to make sure we don't leave sharp edges, because obviously sour crop and crop stasis is a concern, but we're also worried about perforations and damage to the crop caused by large bones. We want to make sure that there's nothing in the aviary that the bird has a tendency to eat. So if a bird has a low calcium for some reason, that can encourage them to eat substrate off the floor. We want to try and feed them in an area that is clean and is separate from the substrate. So don't try and put the food onto the substrate because again, you're going to encourage the bird to ingest the substrate at the same time as the food. So feed them on a shelf, feed them somewhere on the glove, feed them where you haven't got substrate there that they can eat. 